In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can set up your own personal web server for development or playing around on uh, an Ubuntu desktop. So we'll be installing Apache, MySQL, and PHP, and this will be on Ubuntu 11.10. So before we get actually into anything, I want to go find the documentation for this and show you what that is. So it's on the Ubuntu site, we go to support, and then you can access the free documentation. You'll notice there are versions here for official documentation, um, but we're actually not going to use those because those would install the individual pieces, and we're going to in install all of it in one fell swoop. Uh, and that you can find in the community documentation. There's a lot of clicks here, and we'll put the URL up here at the end, so you can just go directly to it. But I want to show you how I got there. So in the documentation under software, you can look up various applications. And then within the applications, we're going to look at servers and web applications. And then we go down to web servers, and you'll find Apache PHP MySQL, the classic LAMP stack. And so the final URL here is helpubuntu.com community Apache MySQL PHP. And this shows us a, a very nice simple app, uh, some simple commands so that we can install this using tasks cell. So this has all, all of our basic documentation and note that this is for Ubuntu 10.4 uh, and higher versions. So any of the latest versions are going to work with this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install task cell. Right? So here's a command line way to do it. And then the second thing we'll do is actually install the LAMP server using task cell. Sort of a, a, a helper application that will do these sort of multi-package installations for us. So I'm going to show you real quick how, how, to, how you can install task cell. Um, you can install this uh, through a GUI using your Ubuntu Software Center. So if I search for task cell in the software here, you can see uh, it's here and I can just click the install button. Um, chances are if you're doing this, you're going to need to use command line. You're going to have to use command line to use task cell itself. It doesn't have a GUI. So I'm not going to install it that way, but I just want to show you it is there if you feel more comfortable doing that. But you're going to have to get a little dirty with the command line on this. So I'm going to go to the command line. Uh, to actually install this. And we can look at the, uh, let me move this out of the way, uh, so we can look at the uh, command that's in the, the, the instructions here. So sudo apt-get, this is classic command line installation of something, uh, install, and then the name of what I want to install, which is task cell. It's very hard to say that without tripping over your words. Um, go ahead and put in my sudo password, and then hit yes. Uh, and it'll take it, you know, just a, a few quick minutes here to uh, actually go through the installation process. So I return to my prompt. So now task cell is installed. So that's step one. Step two is to now actually install the LAMP server with our new tool uh, that we just installed. So we'll move this out of the way. There's my, my second command, right? So it's very similar to the one we just ran uh, for apt-get. So this is sudo task cell install and then what we want to install from from within that tool which is the lamp dash server so i'm going to go ahead uh run this installation this one will be a little more involved uh, it's going to pop up like a little wizard and, and ask us a few questions um, so it needs to pull down the packages and as it sort of unpacks them and gets them going it'll ask us some questions about configuration that we'll need to take care of So as we go along, we need to set up our MySQL root user. So who is the super user here? So I'll just type in a password, uh, which you really should remember. Uh, it asks you to repeat it. Uh, really important to not forget your MySQL root user. It's kind of a pain to have to reset that. Um, and once we get through the installation, there we go. So now we should have a web server. Uh, and it should be running. Uh, so I'm going to go to my browser. Uh, in a new tab here and go to localhost and it is working so it, our lamp stack the entire lamp stack has been installed and the server is running for us so that's pretty awesome um, so that's just getting things sort of initially installed I want to point out a few other things one is that you should use task cell to install 
but not to uninstall or remove. So if you want to remove your LAMP stack, they have instructions for this, um, all of the individual packages that really should be removed. And if you didn't want to use task cell, you could just manually apt get install all of those packages. Uh, it's essentially doing the same thing. It's just task cells doing that for you. Um, also, I want to show in the in the documentation here that under that initial stuff, there's all of this uh, documentation on doing the individual pieces as well. So the easy way is task cell, but all the detailed stuff is still there as well if you want that. Uh, and then the last thing I want to point out is PHP my admin. That's a common tool that a lot of people like to use to manage their database. Um, so we have to install PHP my admin is pretty much what the instructions say. So again, this is another application. We can go into the software center and I can install PHP my admin from here. Click the install button and it'll install it. Uh, that's fine. Since I've started in command line, I'm just going to continue that way. I just want to show you that. So again, this is just a, an apt-get install, uh, sudo apt-get install uh, for PHP my admin. Uh, and it's going to go ahead and you know run through the classic. I say yes. Um, and this is also going to ask us uh, for a little bit of configuration information. Um, so it needs to know what what kind of web server is PHP my admin supposed to run with uh, Apache since that's what we're doing. Uh, and then I need to configure PHP my admin. And basically this is saying, unless you know what you're doing, just follow the instructions in the wizard. So that's what we're going to do. Um, yes, I do want to follow the wizard here. Um, and I need to have a password for the database administrative user, which is what we created the last time when we are installing the LAMP server. And then that's the password for MySQL itself. Um, password confirmation. So just remember these passwords. Um, make sure that you, you have passwords that you can remember so you can get access to this stuff. So now PHP my admin is installed. So if I go to localhost slash uh, PHP my admin, um, that's now installed and running. So it doesn't come with, with part of the LAMP server task cell installation, but it's very easy for you to just add your own PHP my admin. So I'll log in here. Ta-da, I can manage my database through a GUI if I'd like to. OK, so we have all the working pieces in place. Uh, but now we need to actually use it. So I have localhost. That's great. But I need, what if I want my own website files in here? So let's take a look at where stuff is and, and how to add our own web uh, information in here. So the location for the server is at var www. So slash var starting from the root. And you'll see index.html is the only thing that's in there. And that is what is displaying our it works page when we go to localhost, because uh, that is our web root. We can also look at the web root in, uh, in just our regular uh, folders here. So I open this up and we go to the file system, because we have to come back out of my user uh, directories. We can go to var www, that's the web root, and there's the index.html file. Now let's say I wanted to start adding some stuff. Um, go in and create a new folder for a new website. Uh, it's grayed out and I can't. I don't have permission um, to actually access this. It's not in my user directory. So we'll need to take a look at that. I'm going to go back to my uh, my terminal here and, uh, and we'll, we'll look at it uh, from this side. Um, so again, I can try and make a directory, but I'm getting this actual error now, which says permission denied. So let's go up and look at the permissions. Right, so I'm doing a list all here. Uh, and you can see that the www directory is owned by root, because root installed it. We're doing all those sudos, and you need root uh, to, to do all these installations. Um, but now my web root is also controlled by root and not by my user. So I have to use sudo to do everything. Or I can change the ownership of just my web root to my owner, which in this case, uh, or my account, which happens to be parallels. So now you can see I did a chone uh, just on the web root folder to my account, so I don't have to keep doing sudo and deal with all the permissions problems. That's a personal choice for you. This is my local, so I'm not too worried about a ton of security around my web root. Um, so if I go back in here now to my web root, you'll see that I can now make a directory and I don't get permission denied. 
And we can go back over here also to my file browser, right, and uh, in the GUI. And you can see that I've created the folder and I can get access to it. And now I can create new folders and documents. So I'm going to create uh, a new document for my new website called My Site. Um, just index.html could be index.php, you know, whatever. Put your CMS files in here. I'm going to open this up. Um, I'm not even going to really put HTML in here. I just want to test to make sure this is working. So I'm just going to put some text in here. So, um, you know, this is my new development site. Woo, exciting. Uh, I'll save this file and we can uh, go ahead and just close this out. And uh, so again, I'm in var www my site folder inside of my web root. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the browser and test this. So localhost is web root, www, my site folder within it, and my index.html is displaying. So that's pretty cool. I have a website. So now that I have this uh, working and I can put up many dev sites, I don't really need this index.html in my main web root because um, it's just showing a message that I don't really need. So I can go ahead and I'll just move this off to the trash. Um, I could put a website directly in the root, but for development you often have many sites. So I removed the index.html in the www folder. And so now when I go back to localhost, I don't get that text that was displaying, but I can actually see a listing of all the folders that are in that directory, which would be all my development sites I'm working on, and then I can just click into the one that I need. Okay, so we have a web server installed and running, and we know where to put our files um, so that we can start creating development sites uh, within that. So the last thing that we need to do is see how we can turn the server on and off, because it was turned on for us by default, but what if we want to turn it on or off or restart it? So back uh, on this documentation, and it's here, you can search anywhere on the web to find the, the command for turning the server on and off. Um, but I know it's in this one page of documentation, which is really handy, so I'll go here. Uh, under installing Apache 2, which is towards the top, there's this line that shows you the commands uh, for restarting. You can also use that to stop it and start it individually without a restart. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. So it's sudo slash etsy slash init dot d and then slash apache um, yeah there's other ap's there there we go apache 2 um, and then stop to stop it so i've now stopped it if i go back to the browser here and i reload this page uh, go up here and just you know reload it's not working now so the local server the web server is just not running so it's not going to serve anything if i redo that command and i type in start then uh, it'll start the server up again for me. So we can go back to the browser and I'll reload again. And now it's running again. So Etsy init d Apache 2 um, stop or start or restart if you just want to restart. If you've made some configuration changes in particular, um, you would want to restart the server so that your, your changes would take effect. So um, yeah, so we've set up the basic uh, LAMP stack, we have PHP My Admin installed, and we've got some websites going. So uh, everything's set to sort of get going, and then in the next video, we'll look at how to actually tweak the configuration uh, for Apache MySQL and PHP. See you next time. Do you